So if you notice on the screen here, everybody, you can see where I'm starting to put in some of the darks to control where the lights are coming from. You see that? Mm -hmm. You can see that the light is coming down this way. Notice how I'm not even worried about the horn just yet, you see? Mm -hmm. If we don't get this structure together right here, if we don't get the structure of the head together, the horns don't mean nothing. You know, we can play with the horns and, you know, like I was saying about just the positioning last week, we can just take that right off the page. So that's what I'm in debate with. Am I going to take that right off the page? And at what point am I going to bring it back in to cut off this corner over here? So on and so forth, you know? Look at the dark that's in the middle here, and I would start making those short strokes. But the main thing is, is to show how the fur is moving in those areas in this earlier form. Like blow up in that area, everybody. I'm gonna go on the laptop over here. And I'm gonna blow up this joint. For me, right? Let's see here. Here, and then now we go here. So then I can see what direction. So this one is looking more like a bull almost. And if you see, it's almost like a star pattern. It's going right here in the middle here. And then right from there, they, they, they start to go down. You see that? And it's like, almost like a starburst because the this area goes to the left and goes down. You see it and this side goes the opposite way to the left and goes down around the eye. So, if you can get that mimic that movement of that fur in there, everybody, you'll see it. It's like a little starburst of a movement. You know. Now, if you're using a graphite stick, I would just use the point. If you're using a regular pencil like how we're using or a drawing pencil, use the point and turn it on the side. And then this way you can get that movement. You see. And start that hair filling. You see, yeah, I was starting. Well, maybe I can move that over a little bit more. There's more darknesses to the right side here. And it's coming from this point right about in there. And then it starts to go like that, like so. So then, yeah, there we go. You see, I'm just establishing where these darks are before I even get to the horn. I'm not even worried about dawn. I'm more so worried about these darks and lights because if I get those going, I know that's the ooh and off factor. That's when everybody's gonna be like, ooh, oh, oh, you know, and all that stuff. And then they start asking you questions like, you know, is this your profession? Or do you do animals all the time? Or are you trying to master rams and all this? But yeah, these are the conversations you'll start to get. <laughs> and you can have fun like me. Well, it's not my particular medium, graphite, or you can just, you know, you can play around. Oh, well, you know, my intent in showing this particular creature was to try to indulge myself in understanding mountain life. <laughs> <laughs> but that is. Rick, everybody, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make people believe that, you know, you're really having these moments for human reasons, not just for pocket reason and ego reasons. Mm -hmm. But now the issue, a lot of times people do these things for ego reasons, and it's okay. It's kind of hard not to get your ego caught up, you know, but that's what you want to fight. But nonetheless, you still want to get in there. It makes you feel good when you hit something and it really looks good and it really starts to look like what it is you intended it to look like. So then that arrogance kicks in. But it's okay, though. Have it. Have your moment, everybody. You know, see what we're doing? Adjust things. Really adjust the eye now. I can adjust the eye and get it to do what I needed to do earlier on. Now that that outline is there, I can go back in here and darken in certain things. Now I expand this part of the eye here, which is the top of the eye there. Do you see? All that's rocking and ready to go. 
you know, so I don't have to darken it in right away. I wanted to, to get established and get ready to go. Now I'm looking at the eye here and I'm trying to establish how these darks are running. So we got one dark that runs through the corner of the eye there. <clears throat> and then now the other part, yep, for all the fleshiness, that darkness comes this way. And then right in front of where the horn is, right there. So you have another dark area right there. Okay, boom. Now, right above that area, you have another dark area before you get to the horn area that comes around to where the ear is here. Also, it has some fur points that stick out like so. So I would put that there just to say where things are going to be. You see, and it's starting to really feel like that muscle is moving now. That's what I like. I learned that from the impressions, you guys. What I think it was Titian that used to say he, or was it Rubens? Yeah, it might be one of those guys. But anyway, the saying goes that this individual would not stop doing uh, uh, his fleshiness to his paintings until he felt like the flesh was coming out of the surface. Wow. So in other words, yeah, in other words, what I got from that, everybody, is, is that I want these forms and movements to feel like he's about to walk out the page before I say I'm comfortable with it. Now, notice, I'm not saying, oh, it has to be right and wrong. I'm saying I want the muscle to really feel like muscle to make me feel good so that I can say, yeah, that's a done deal. Mm -hmm. And that's what I grabbed from. I believe it was Titian, yeah, that said that. No, you see, Rubens was earlier on and he wanted the fleshy thing too, and that's what they got from him. But anyway, artist's main intent is, I want you to feel that. I want you to feel that muscle there. I want you to feel that form and that movement, you know? And that's the main objective. Yeah, like, look, okay. I made this here, come across to the ear. That opening is right about here. The opening is right about here. Yeah, there we go. And it's almost like how a flame is, you know. Tapers down in the middle here. So all of this is dark. And I'm just going in and establishing where these darks and light areas are. That's all I'm doing. You see? You see, then you can blow the picture up and you start doing the same thing if you like. But that's the key, everybody. So now we're in this area over the eye, right in here. This is all darkness in here. So I started with a light darkness there because now that goes into where the horn is, you see. And what starts to happen, if you put in these darks and lights in the, in the how we say, the, the, a good perceived location on the page, all of a sudden it's gonna to snap too and you're gonna start seeing your image. Because remember, you're trying to excite yourself first. You're the smaller ramification of the bigger picture. So that means that if you get all tingly when you look at it, that means that 50% of the people looking at your piece is gonna have the same reaction because they're really gonna see, see what it is that you're intending for us to see. So we're intending for you to see this this ram, mountain goat, you know what I mean? The whole nine yards. See how now, look, I can change this area up because it comes, and it comes a little bit before. And then now that ear, yeah, see that ear gets a little bit rounder on one side. So then I can come in and erase out. So you get your pink pearl eraser. I wouldn't really worry about my needed eraser just yet. I would get that pink pearl and cut that area right out. Like, I really like the pink pearl, everybody. What's your race that you like, Nadine? Um, I don't know. I like the gummy one. Oh, you like the needed eraser? Cool. Yeah. All right. Me, I like that pink pearl. I don't know. It's my all-time favorite. Because I remember when I used to go to my mom's office space when she worked at Citibank. They would have these all over the place. Pink mm -hmm. pearl eraser. And the and the, um, the pins that were erasable. So that pink eraser was something I was familiar with. So, you know, that's the one I like. It's not that I prefer it, I just like it. It's nostalgia for me. 
or some of you others that are in our group, tell us what you race that you like. Leave a comment or so. You know what I mean? Even if you're not drawing, if you're not drawing and you just watch us, come on our page and just let us know what you race or are you favorite of? You know what I mean? Right. Is it because you can get it real easy because it's where you work at? Or is it just because you like it? You know what I mean? My reason is because I used to go to my mom's job when I was younger, you know, and you have to be with your mom because you don't have a babysitter, you're a latchkey kid. You know what I mean? So I would go to mom to work and then they would leave, like, not they, she would leave me in, in, in the, uh, how would you say, the supply room. Because then this way I could turn on the little radio and, you know, act a fool if I, <laughs> if I wanted to <laughs> in there. It would be almost like I was at home in my room because it felt it was big as my bedroom. So that's how I took it, you know what I mean? Right. But it was a safe place for me to go in. And then as I got older, then mom started to, you know, how would you say, uh, 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 intrigue me with the idea of working with her. Then. So yeah. I would open up envelopes things like this and make sure letters got open right because it was the Parkins Violations Bureau. Uh -huh. So if you wanted to get a ticket in New York, she her office would be the office that handled that ticket for the state of New York. Wow. Yeah, so you would you would send that thing, and it's still that way. Uh, PV, uh, what's it called? PVB, Parking Violations Bureau, City Bay. I think they still control that account. So my mom was working on those accounts and things, and then that's how I understood some of the things there. So you know, I would be in that in that office looking at magazines. This is before any laptops was ever there. This is before any phone. Uh -huh. No such thing as phone you sat in a room by yourself and kept quiet <laughs> and that's something yeah but look at what it afforded me the opportunity to do to, to get engaged right. with self to understand self and to have these creative moments that i'm able to reach back to to help me even now to this day right you know so that's what I say, have the experiences, everybody. Really work to have the experiences. Because that's more important. You're going to be able to pull from that. From all our elders out there, that's what you really want to do. It's not passe or, oh, I'm too, I'm old. No, it's, your experiences is what's going to give you everything. I guarantee you. Yeah, you might be 70, 65, uh, 55, 56, 58. But I guarantee you, if you look back in your experiences pool, you have an experience that can help that can help you or assist you right now, present day. Right. And these are the things that you should appreciate. And these are the things that we try to bring out to you during our drawing sessions, you know.